Beautiful people, hello, welcome back to another episode of Sunday Sessions with Rich Podcast. Um, if you're new, welcome. I drop episodes every single Sunday. You can find me on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment, share. I want to help as many people as possible. That's the whole purpose of this platform, and I need your help, so thank you. On this episode, guys, we have Raj C., he is a uh, journalist for SB Nation. My guy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, bro. This is this is really dope. I've never done like a non sports, you know, show, like a show that's like not dedicated to sports. So this is this is dope. I appreciate you for hopping on, man. I, I gave you a, a mini red carpet, but let us know who you are and what you got going on. Yeah, bro. Uh, name is Raj. I, you know, cover the Lakers, basically. So I write about them. I do podcasts. I do videos and just make content um, around the sports, kind of around the basketball, around the Lakers. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, bro. I've kind of dedicated my passion into that, kind of found a passion in it and kind of chased that for the last few years. So um, and the fruits of that labor are starting to kind of get created there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's dope as hell, man. What what kind of like got you into that into the sports world? What made you like this is what I want to do with my with my time right now? It's crazy how kind of life works that way. Like in like um, so I grew up in L.A. You know, so when you grow up in Los Angeles, like you know who the Lakers are. You know what mm-hmm. I mean. You know who like Kobe is. You know who Shaq is. But I wasn't like a huge fan, and so like I wasn't like watching like that. And then like in high school, I was playing on the team and. uh like, I didn't really know about basketball. I went to this small school in, in L.A., and the guy's like, yeah, I just want you to go home and watch Kobe. You know what I mean? And uh, in my head, I was like a 14-year-old. I was like, why would I go watch Kobe? Man, I'm not trying to be in the NBA. I'm just trying to make my high school team. Yeah. You know? uh, but I went home, and then, like, I just fell in love with the game and um, started watching and playing more from there. And then career kind of went a different way, and I just, like, uh, Twitter, I think, was starting up, and I started, like, getting involved, and uh, I honestly just wanted 100 people to, like, talk basketball with, you know, that was the goal, and then it, like, grew to something that I couldn't imagine, so, but yeah, that's kind of how I started with it. I think everyone kind of finds their lane, passion in different ways, you know, um, and I think we live in a world now where, like, any any passion is, like, monetiz- monetizable, you know, like, you can find a way to kind of make a living with it, but that's how I kind of got into it, bro. That's dope as hell, man. Were you? I know we were chatting a little bit before uh, we we recorded, but were you familiar with like manifestation, law of attraction, or was it like when you were already in it and then you start applying it and being conscious yeah. and then like shit just like took off times ten? Yeah, bro. So you start like I mean, no one thinks about that while they're on the climb, you know, or to whatever they're trying to go to. But I've always been like interested in that and to how people kind of, you know, create things out of nothing like paths. And I feel like, you know, once you start that, like the universe will kind of tell you your way, like it'll kind of give you clues of like if you're doing the right thing, if you're going on the right path, if you should stop, you know what I mean? There's usually like clear clues, but like every step on the path like i kept getting more and more like um affirmations that like i'm doing the right thing you yeah. know confirmations that the work i put in is kind of um is right and correct and the the reception you get out of that um but like i always say bro like growth is not linear you know ni- neither mm-hmm. is success um or neither is development none of that shit is linear but you find your passion you can chase it i think we're all like in that type of space especially oh, people like facts, who are, 22 to like 35 you know to me that's all the same age range like to me like we're all trying to find whatever we're trying to do so um yeah big on that that's exactly it's it's like it's interesting when you because like it's every it's a common thing when anybody's like success story or just like them achieving what they desire it's just you have to because people think you can just lay back and things are going to come to you. You got to put in the fucking nah. work, my guy. You got to put in the work. And you're not going to always know like what's what to do. But that's the that's the the journey of it. Then the universe matches you with these random situations. Probably somebody who you networked with randomly that you never thought you would and then that conversation just led to this but it's because you took that initiative and that action and then the universe met you halfway. So guys, if you listening, when anything you doing, you might not know the direction but as long as you trying then 
the exactly. reality has to mirror at that point is low. For sure, bro. Uh, I would say, like, you know, if you um, if you live in the work, blessing, blessings come to visit. You know what I mean? Like, if you mm. if you live in the work, blessings come to visit. Visit and number two, I think people get lost in something, but like. Every every business is a people business. You know? mm-hmm. Like you don't think of that, but like every single business is a people business. So you got to be able to connect. Got to be able to. I think networking has like a negative connotation in terms of like you're using somebody oh, for something. Networking right? is like, key, man. Networking is key, and that's a, that's a friend you gain. It's not like it's like it's exactly. not like a, I can't stand you. I'm just using you for information. Like we're both like minded people, unless when we're we're friends at this point. You know what's crazy is like people who are up and successful, like they can tell too, you know, like they can tell who's trying to just use them, who's like a legit yeah, person who's like passionate about their shit and it's, it's like the energy, bro. It, exactly, bro. It's and like the energy. If, if if they can't feel that like, you know, um type of connection and stuff, like they're just they're not gonna be part of your, you know, journey, which which oh. is fine. But I'm saying I'm saying like that that's extremely important to me like how you talk to people how you gain that's how you get opportunities Mm -hmm. um especially if you have no backstory in it if you have no family in it you know um so much stuff is nepotism driven sometimes but you gotta get out your comfort zone gotta get out gotta get out that that space man it's this I, i always tell this story with um when i was in college i had an intuitive nudge to drop out and show people okay to take the role less travel, like show people what you can take the role less travel and be successful. That's how you do it. Blah blah blah. blah. So, right. not having the college degree, I was working in security. So I was I needed money to to pay the bills at that point, and I networked with an entire building. I was the doorman, and <laughs> I was just consistent every single day. I made my energy known in that place and built solid connections, and ended up being in the tech tech sales space but just nice. you applying manifestation and just networking and being yourself it's not phony conversations it's just utilizing that pond of people and it's making connections genuine connections that you will have for the rest of your life and the universe will bless and reward you most definitely yeah and like I, like nothing works right away right and I, like i've been like reading a lot of books and stuff like that and like the alchemist and stuff like that oh, they kind of tell you I think all those books have like the same type of uh message basically like it's about the journey right it's yeah. about like the work up to it and you know i'm a big believer in kobe and rest in peace to him who died in 2020 Mamba, but man. That, that death was crazy that's bro kind of i the... felt that that was I, I was on a bus when that when that happened i remember <laughs> exactly where i was at that it was so shit. sudden you know what i mean like yeah. it's like something you don't really like expect and then it also like tells you how like short life is like how quickly that shit can be taken you know what i mean like someone like that who did everything cor- like correct in terms of career family yeah. next career you know like everything lined up and then god can just bam like come right in but yeah like those kobe preached this a lot and it's i think it's true it's like the the love is in the everyday because like if you look at our everyday lives we do a lot of mundane shit right like yeah Ninety percent of your life is like a bunch of mundane stuff, and then maybe you do something on a Saturday. But it's like enjoying the mundane, and that's when like you reach your whatever, like enjoying a journey. Whatever. Exactly. Once enjoying you can enjoy the journey. the journey, that shit is easy. Then the whatever success you think is like starts pouring in. But until to me, you can enjoy the work with it. Um, Even a struggle, you have to enjoy the struggle. But then you yeah, and then you sure. appreciate the 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 delay gratification that comes afterwards. For sure, yeah, and every book kind of preaches that, right? like the delayed gratification. Reading this book right now called "Discipline Is Destiny," um, which is re- it's really good, and it kind of teaches Ooh, about that. Kind of, yeah, um, by Ryan Holiday, just just really good book on like just doing the everyday shit is how thing kind of things kind of build up. People see the end result, right? You see the guy on the floor, or whatever. Like you, all that work is done, you know, before that. Into and whatever you're interested in, I'm sure you have a vast array of like listeners or whatever they're passionate about like Mm -hmm. all that work is done way before so um yeah i think manifestation is not just like saying something and then going and watching netflix right like that's not that's not manifest that's not manifestation that's a that's a dream that's a that's a you have to you have to be the character you have to vibrate you have to talk it you have to immerse yourself in that energy and then it mirrors you can't be half-assed and like you could easily say i want to be 
a Lakers journalist, right? <laughs> right. If you didn't do the actions and like become that guy, probably wouldn't have happened. <laughs> well, what exactly. happened? It took like years later. Exactly. Yeah. So you would you you would just never know if that went through or we'll um, never know. But like, but what, what do you think about that, bro? Because I I really believe like everyone. Like I feel blessed to have a passion, number one. Yeah. And I think a lot of people yeah. don't even know what theirs is. Yeah. Or they've got a like a degree in something that maybe pushed them towards the road. You know what I mean? But like yeah. I I feel like we live in a world where like there's endless possibilities, you know what I mean? It you, is. Your you society is not longer is no longer ten thousand, it's like ten million because yeah. it's because the internet. But that that's what I believe, bro. And I think like accounts like you like manifest and stuff like that is it's important for, for people trying to to grow on whatever they're they're chasing because like the whole the, the whole purpose of this whole experience is just creating the your ideal reality and whatever that looks like and right if you're observing something any reality that isn't favorable you should be thankful because now you're shown what you do want so now let's switch to perspective and create this oh my life ain't the way i want to okay now we know now okay what does it look <laughs> like now Let's create that reality. So you just you just got a gift. Every moment is a gift. Even the struggle shit, man. It might not look like it in that moment because it's tough. You're in the you're in the 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 fire. You're in that dark ass cave and you don't see a light. But as soon as that one opportunity, that one thing yeah. that comes in, now you see the lesson behind it. You just you just armored up. You leveled up. So was it really a bad thing or was it a blessing in disguise? For sure, for sure. And looking everything kind of through that lens. Um, I think it's kind of how I kind of grew my shit. I, again, I said I wanted like 100 followers on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, that shit's like at 50K, I think, right now. It's like it's absurd kind of where that kind of went. And then once you get into that realm or whatever, you can kind of make different connections, things like yeah. that. But um, I just think like the journey up, you kind of learn different things um, about yourself as well going through going up into like a career maybe that you don't have a background in you don't have a degree in like i don't have a journalist degree or anything like that you know what i mean um so but you don't need one in, in, in today's like world you know we're so you can learn shit on youtube you can read you can do all kinds of stuff we're in like a we're in a world that like just didn't exist 15 Bro. years ago you know and it's, it's absurd the inter my nephew so you might hear a little whining baby um <laughs> but it's so it's so true though because like before you probably have like little working events where you can like talk to people and it's such a small yeah. space and now you could be talking to someone from freaking australia for all you know and <laughs> it's like and then even oh it's just crazy bro it's just crazy like especially like the followers you have like you, it's just people <laughs> oh you're so cute uh <laughs> you just have followers from different different places and it's just like damn we're all connected it really don't matter where we at a hundred percent, bro. It's a totally different world, bro. It's a like worldwide economy too. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, and so like you're just in a different place. Um, so that's that's why I believe, bro. I believe like everyone has a passion, man. I'm blessed to have one and and be able to chase one. And not everyone, you know, has the means for that as well. People yeah, gotta work their nine to five or you know whatever. But it you is. can even uh, I encourage you to to whoever listening to even use your nine to five to fund. Hundred percent. Please do. Please do. Get that salary, stack up, and do what you need to do. This is just investment. And find and don't settle. Find something that you can enjoy doing in the meantime. And to set that attention too. Like Richard, what is I don't even know what that would look like. Well, just set the intention. <laughs> like I'm in an awesome nine to five job that's paying me X amount of salary. I my time is uh my most valuable and I work less and make more. And then shit, that one LinkedIn recruiter go <laughs> pop in your shit. <laughs> Say you looking for you looking for something. So it's all about setting intentions, guys. Like this don't be on autopilot in this life. Just set intentions for everything that you want. For sure. Yeah. And I like I I just finished this book called Um Psychology of Money, right? And I think Ooh, you know I've heard of that book. Oh, dude, it's it's so good. It kind of puts you into like a, a weird perspective i love reading books like this because 
it kind of like shifts your view on a lot of things and all of, we all have a like again money kind of rules our world right in a yeah. way like whatever you got to have money to survive of course like that's to. there's going to be people who preach money isn't everything and those are people who can who are a lot who have the means to say that right like most people who say that can you know pay their bills or whatever or have their bills paid by someone else but our like ex- our experience with money is the only thing that's like tied only to us right so like a person who makes two hundred dollars in eight hours of work like right to them they're they're putting together eight hours work equaling two hundred dollars mm-hmm. when real in someone else reality they would never do eight hours of work for two hundred dollars right in so, someone else reality they work 30 minutes and made ten thousand dollars right so like it's such a changing your like relationship with money in terms of x like, man like uh the people who are like again you don't you don't have to be a millionaire to be happy or anything it's just like the kind of perception in your mind kind of um it was saying like people who are rich know that there's so much of a surplus out there that there's enough for everyone right yeah. but the person making eight dollars an hour doesn't have that it doesn't have that relationship so they stay in a relationship with money that keeps them just up lower than this floor right so their yeah. mind can't even process that like three hundred dollars an hour is something that's real that's going on in this world right they're just yeah. like they're just living so it's, it's a really interesting kind of book and i think that it kind of is part of all of life as well like changing our relationship with whatever we think about or whatever career you think about or you know it's the person like it's basically like the person who got rich isn't better than you in any way they just oh. got good with whatever they got you know what i mean so it's like it's a it's an interesting kind of perspective on money and life and all that but it's another book yeah i'd, I'd recommend if 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 you haven't if you haven't gotten into De- that one yet definitely gotta check that out and all that even even like the 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 hating energy like it, like if, some, if someone envies you like guys i want like sure. whenever you envy somebody or it's like this jealousy like if someone says oh i'm jealous that you're there for example let's say you're on vacation somebody says i'm jealous that you're there they're saying that they hate secretly that they're not experiencing it and you are let's just call a spade a spade (laughs) right now what that energy does is it holds you in a vibration of i'm not worthy of experiencing this okay instead of you being inspired by that person's experience say wow i'm really glad that that person is able to experience this really cool place yeah, I want to experience that now. What what does that look like for me? I'm inspired. That's a better feeling thought. Right. We got to sure. change. We got to change our perspective on our vibration. A hundred percent. And also, like some uh, another part of the book that's really great. It's like just because they're good with money doesn't because we do this in society. We you know we prop up people who are celebrities get put on to speak about things that they are not informed at all about. Right. Mm-hmm. But just because they're good at their craft, we um, assume they're good at every other thing they're good at right so you see a lot of a lot of people in that type of pedestal but just because someone's good with money or someone's good at their job doesn't mean they're good at everything else in life they just happen to be good at that one yeah. thing it's why a lot of people who are even rich crash right they whatever happens to them so it's just an interesting kind of thing on life as well um and like there's a quote like if if we all threw our problems like in the middle of a table we'd run to grab ours so quickly, right? Like we'll, we yeah. would see all, all the problems on the table. And we would so quickly just go and grab ours back. We're like, oh, Bro. like I'd rather just have so my true. problems back. You know what I mean? That's a perspective. I think a lot of people in life just don't. And it's not about like looking at the homeless guy and be like, hey, I'm not there. That's not what that is about. But even like, e- like even even taking that homeless person, yeah. like let's, let's say you was, you was complaining about some shit thing that happened at work and you see this person just doesn't have <laughs> right. a place to stay. It's like, damn, I'm complaining about some dumb shit and this person <laughs> over here not as, not as well off. So it's like you change your perspective <laughs> to be like grateful. 100%. Yeah, gratitude, huge part of it as well. Um, We are like, I think we're the most like depressed society that's ever, uh, again, I'm keep dropping books here, but like, hey, I'm, uh, I love, I'm I love big, books, man. I'm a big part of it, man. I've switched to instead of Netflix at night, like I'd recommend anyone just try it. It's, I know it's like a, I don't know, it, people say it to try to look cooler, but I really do believe reading at night is oh, like, facts. it's really good for the body, but Programming this book the called like, mind. yes, 100%. And this book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a... Oh, Giving a Fuck. Yeah, yeah, you can curse on me, book. Curse <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I, I go on pause where we don't really curse. But like, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, right? And it's just... 
it's really good because it's like uh, we give a fuck about so yeah. much today. You know, I don't know if have you read any of that. that I have book? the book. I have because I have a. Uh, I'm the reader who I take what's needed in a chapter okay. in a book, and I haven't opened that book up yet. But I haven't. I have the book. I have the book. Yeah. So like, uh, one of the like again, just main points of it is like our issues are like no longer survival rated related right our issues are now existential so like our issues no longer are am i going to eat today which was a real issue we had not even that long ago you know we were hunters and gatherers like not not even that long ago but now it's like damn i'm bored you know or like i have to go to work like those are existential questions of like am i am i living my truth you know like those are questions that we weren't even allowed to ask 100 years ago because there's just nothing like it so it's a it's another like really interesting one and subtle art of not giving a fuck doesn't mean you don't care about something it means yeah. you care about one thing so much that nothing else matters you know i think that's again all that about tunnel vision it, exactly bro tunnel vision and like that manifestation i think goes with it you and have like, to be obsessed you have to be bro. obsessed you got to have discipline obsessed and have to be disciplined whatever exactly you do. Bro. Whatever the fuck you do, yeah. So that that's right, and uh, I think like you believe that as well, right? I think that's 1, part of the manifestation, like working towards it and, and putting the time with it as well. Um, you just have to have blind faith. You're not you're, you're not in control yeah. of the how. That's not your job. Your job is just to immerse yourself in the vibration energetically, so that the reality can can create itself. So you only have one job. Yeah, things right. around you might show you differently. But that's just the old vibration. You have to stand firm. 100%, bro. And like I always say, live in the work. You know, like whatever your work man. is, like um, whatever your work is, man, live live in the work. And then uh, and if you can enjoy that, you can you find whatever uh, peace that you can find in the in this world. So that's facts, bro. That's facts, man. I'm um, what's this? I've been one so I read the Alchemist. Mm-hmm. There's a there's one book I want I want to reread. It's Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one. I think you would enjoy that one. Well, what um, was it called again? Yeah. Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Ooh. Hill. Okay, Napoleon I'll Hill. I've you. heard of, is a really good writer. I know, but I haven't heard of that. I haven't read that book yet. But I'll, I'll send I'll, I'll send down. I'll send you that one out. That's a that's a a nice book. And it's this I've been. I've been dabbling into um like life after death things recently, Ooh. like that transition okay. period, like that, like where are we? Cause like I know all this is temporary, but I'm more curious about okay, what's happening, what's the scene behind here? Like okay. after I'm I take off these VR goggles as Richard Farmer. <laughs> Who is the true essence being that was, you know, observing this? That's what I'm curious about. So that's what I've been okay. reading recently. That's actually what got you kind of into that, you know, like kind of, um, kind of uh, wondering about the afterlife. I guess, like, what what kind of pushed you in that direction? Yeah. So I dabble. Uh, I'm a big psychedelics guy. Love psychedelics. Okay. Um, I had when I was younger, I was I was depressed at the time. Didn't really. I was I was stubbornly depressed. I didn't know what to correctly do at the time. And I was just staying okay. in this real victim, low vibrational self. So I was I was in my little pity state. Um and I was, you know, sure. I don't recommend this, but I was taking some acid at the time and I went to see <laughs> my grandmother. And I went to my grandmother's house and I remember being in the kitchen. And at that point of time I had suicidal thoughts, but you know, not really go action it. You just talking to talk. So I'm in the kitchen mm. and I take a knife and I have it by my wrist and I'm about to do it. And I wow. hear a voice and it says, if you do that, we're just going to come back and play this again. And it oh, shook wow. me. And I was like, what? And it was just this clear, distinct voice. I'm like, what do you mean we're going to come back and do this again? So now I'm just puzzled. Like, wait, what? So this, right. one, this confirms that this is a matrix. Let's just, just that was my first <laughs> thought. And two, who the fuck are you? And so I just dropped the knife. I'm like, Wow, so that, that just really shook me. So that is what really, really got me thinking, like, okay, these are the avatars that we're encompassing while we're here. Like, 
Richard is real, Roger is real right now, but there's also a other version of ourselves that is behind the scenes as well. So I'm like, damn. So there's there's some you you wherever you at right now, you observing me right now in this little <laughs> little matrix. So that shook me. So I was like, okay, I'm here to I'm here for a purpose. So that's first and foremost. Let's let's get that out of the way. Now I need to find my purpose and live in it and help the world. And then that's mm-hmm. where pod came from and all these other different things but that's what got me into like okay what's what's really on the other side what's really on the other side yeah for sure that's crazy so you didn't know the person who was coming or the, the being that was coming to that came and saved you no. i guess like you didn't I'm know assuming who that it's was. just the higher I'm just, I'm just assuming it's my higher self at that okay. point so i'm like wow because because i've always I've, I've known we i've known that we come into here uh, we choose to come here so it's like we're not here just to waste time i'm not here just to work until i'm x amount make yeah. money like that's no that's that just doesn't sound right like the, come on now it has to be a reason why you're here to make an impact on the collective so that the future players have a better place to experience and to learn and whatever whatever the real deep down consciousness meaning that we're here all i know is i want to leave it a better place make an impact help people wake up faster um through the next um incarnations if you will that's just the whole point that's sick have you um kind of dabbled in like what i guess religion say is on the yeah. other side because it's, it's it's really interesting like if you look yes, into bro. like it's kind of dabbled in religions as well like you could see like in islam like it's it's crazy like there's a obviously there's a very distinct hell and heaven right and a lot of these religions have that and Sometimes you don't even want to look at the hell stuff because it's very it's very detailed and dark and stuff that like, mm-hmm. that can happen. Um, and then you look at you know Christianity as well. They kind of go into it, so it's it's crazy what. And again, like we I was talking to my friend yesterday, like if you go back one hundred and ten years, no one on the planet right now was alive. Isn't that isn't that insane? If we're playing a game of uh, you played telephone before, where like mm-hmm. you like tell someone something. By the time you get around the table, it's a totally different thing. Totally right? different, yep. No matter what it is, you could say I had milk today. By the thirtieth person, it would be like the they had person um, they, heard it wrong. They the had person. yogurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and we're still using stuff that we play. We're playing telephone with like three generations of people who weren't here. You know, Man. so it's interesting, kind of how our world um is still run by stuff that yeah. people who aren't even here anymore created. So, uh, but yeah, I think <laughs> afterlife is with that as well because no one knows. No one has dipped to the others. There's people who've like kind of dipped, I think, a little bit, and then you can kind of hear their stories and believe it or not. You you know, I think like a a white light is kind of the you know common thing that you hear. Like people see a light and then they kind of return. They don't go through the light and stuff like that. But yeah, it's interesting that afterlife is a fascinating kind of concept. Um, and uh, we as humans have this ability, kind of, we all know we're going to die one day. But that yeah. kind of thought is like. You Not act like present. you don't, like you live exactly. your life, like you got time, but we don't got time. It's like not omnipresent, you know, even though yeah. like you know it as a fact, it's not an omnipresent thing. It's why people do things that are, you think like, why would you do that? Like you only have mm-hmm. one, you only have one of these. But maybe that's you... why too though. Like, let's say like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an adrenaline junkie. So I'll do some, some okay. reckless shit sometimes. Sure. I think at a course because you know you ain't really go die like your yeah, your physical body yeah that that thing did be this in the ground but your soul that thing will live on i think i think it's that inner knowing that we know that it's more to life than this physical body 100 percent. but I, I just like some things like uh, you talked about the physical being but like your time space here right so like yeah people go like you go like the risk reward factor to me mm-hmm. i take in a lot of things like I'll see a guy run a red light, right? And I'm like, Mm -hmm. the risk reward to that is so low. You know, like, uh, obviously, we speed out yellow lights. Yeah, we speed out yellow lights. It's a different thing. Like, people people stopped at a red and someone just runs it. And my mind always was like, the risk reward to that was, like, so freaking low. Or you have these psychopaths who, you know, do killings. Or, like, when people go rob rob a liquor store or whatever. Like, those things are, like... You have one of these, you know, like you get one, you get one that at least yeah. that we know of. Yeah. I mean, like maybe there's more, uh, some something else, but like you get one of these, like don't mess that up to like go to, and then like you know our judicial system, people getting 70, 80 years, like your life is done. Oh, for like, you, for an emotional ego exactly. decision. It's 
So it, it's crazy how we don't have that in our mind. Like we're not omnipresent about like we're not we're not gonna be here anymore. Yet yeah. people do things that don't suggest that that that's true. So it's it's interesting. It's it's this. Um, I was listening to this quote by Will Smith, and he was saying that we treat people the same way. Like it's not a. It's I can't assume that I'm gonna see you next Thursday. Whenever like the state, let's say you meeting somebody next Thursday, I can't assume mm-hmm. that we're both gonna be here. I'm acting like it, but anything can happen. So while before right. we leave, let's embrace and have this this firm like okay, we're acknowledging we're we're seeing each other. I see you. This isn't like oh, mm-hmm. okay, see you later, bye. I'm on autopilot. problem. <laughs> Think about the next thing. Like no, we're in the present moment, immersing sure. each other, just appreciating it. Will Smith is a super fascinating person with that because he he talked about how like he learned about manifestation real early, and um, his one of his quotes is like the universe will get out of the way. You know, yeah. like you, you, if you do your shit, like the universe will be like, oh, it's gonna I'm, do your I'm, part. Exactly, hundred percent. You either you either creating your reality consciously or unconsciously. Your subconscious mind either running it or you consciously running it. Either way, it's being ran. Have Have you traveled at all, bro? Have you gone like oh, to yeah. other countries and yeah. stuff? You have. I've, I've I travel quite often. I've been to England a crap ton of times. Um, my lady lives there. Um, For sure. I've been to Spain this year. I've been to Wales. I guess Wales and England is kind of same thing, but they separate. But yeah, I'm a big traveler, bro. I'm a big ass traveler. So I'm I'm actually from, I don't know if you know where Nepal is, but like um Nepal is like right above India. So it's like it's squished between India and China. So it's a small Dope. small small little country. That's actually where where I'm from. And I got to go back to my home homeland for the first time in like 20 something years right no way yeah and it was just like the most so i went for like five weeks and you know most people can't even get a week off i was just like blessed to just go for like Damn. five weeks you know vacation how was that experience like 20 years later especially being an adult bro like so I, I was i came here when i was a kid but then like you know i went back um already like 28 and i went over there and like the experience of going overseas, like people over there, they don't have close to what we have here in terms of infrastructure, in terms of flat screen TVs, and in, in terms of you know all, all the material shit we have here. Car, there's no road, like there's no real roads. You know, like the cars are like driving like this next to each other. But I feel like people are happier there. You know, it was like the most. It was the most like trippiest thing i've ever been through you know they have like 80 percent less than what we do but their culture is so family based right like so it's like anyone who goes to work like they have to come home for lunch like there's no lunch at the office like that's not even a thing there like everyone goes home you go to a so we you'll go to a government office and at like at like 12 30 and be like hey where's the guy oh he went home for lunch he's back in like two hours and that's not even like uh what what is wrong with him it's like yeah. uh, oh we'll just wait two hours till he gets back it's such a different like everyone's so much happier they smile their things are family it's that um, attitude of gratitude man 100 percent. and it's not a cons- it's not a consumer like, like there's stores everywhere but it's not a consumer driven society it's a family driven society right so mm-hmm. kids don't move out at 18 like uh, okay. people like they live at home you know the wife the wife comes and lives with the um like if you so if i was to get married over there my wife would come live with me and my family you know like okay. it's a it's such a different perspective over there so i don't know if you saw that when you were in overseas as well but like those countries are a little bit more developed probably than than mine but like just seeing how like different i guess i think like the same thing with the money thing like our reality is this so you mm-hmm. don't even know someone else is what they're doing. We just assume because they don't have nice cars, nice TVs, yeah. nice cell phones, like that they're unhappy. But it's not true. They're like oh. finding their freaking peace within whatever they're living in. So it's it's damn. Cool. That's that's true. You are finding that peace. And then I don't know. I, just, I feel like it's um it's less distractions too. But distractions yeah. keep you know tear you apart. Like if, if when I'm in England, for example, you know, I, it's a lot more vibrant and people are a lot more connected talking to each other friendly not like eh, why are you looking at me why are you talking to me kind of shit it's just more like a a community um mm-hmm. and even like 
you walking down the street and somebody smiling at you or like saying hello. And I just yeah. get into it a habit of just like, hope you have a great day when I'm walking past somebody or even like little, little subtle things, just like, like little manner of things. And then when you come back here, it's just somebody on your phone when you're walking down the street. There's no acknowledgement. Yeah. Like we both see each other. We're ignoring each other. But this should be a it's maybe it's not even a coincidence that you're walking past somebody. Like maybe you were supposed to walk <laughs> past that person. You just right. didn't spark up a conversation and that person could help you in, you know, whatever way. You just don't know, man. You just don't know. So it's just not taking shit for granted with with people in your interaction. So I just challenge anybody just to spark up a just say Hey, hope you have a great day. Oh, hey, love your shoes. Love your outfit. Just, <laughs> man, you never really know. You never really know who you, who you run into. For sure. Yeah, and again, like, people over there, there's not, like, uh, people aren't on their phone all day. You know, like, it's, a, it's such a different kind of world. Um, we're, We've been kind of glued uh to our phones in a way. That, I don't know if you, there's this, like, documentary on netflix um i think it was called the social dilemma i don't think Ooh, you're yeah, able yeah, to watch yeah, yeah. That. i've seen that i've seen that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's just insane how like they are so good at what they do that it's like they're growing at an exponential rate that our brain wasn't really like made to be able to be receptive to right like uh, i don't know how many followers you have whatever like whoever if someone has two thousand followers like we weren't meant to have our thoughts be displayed to two thousand people at a time right it was it was supposed to be displayed to like 50, right? And then you find like a mate in that yeah. like 100, you know? But we're in a world where like you have millions of people you follow. So on Instagram, it's not people, the people you follow doesn't even matter really. Like Instagram is has has created a feed for you that's millions and millions of a reach, right? And it's digging into your like your deepest kind of part of your brain and it's mm-hmm. just like sticking you there. So Maybe like if you, uh, if you, as part of this is in the book too, but like when you have a bad day, you no longer just have a bad day. Mm-hmm. You have a bad day with 3 million people showing that they're having the best day of their life. Like mm-hmm. that, that like gap in like, you know, viewpoint to the brain. Yeah. It's so fascinating. But, um, but yeah, like, like you're saying, like every interaction and gratitude and, and kind of living every day is, is probably the most important thing. Most important, man. Just had an attitude of gratitude. Feel connections, guys. Just spark a conversation. I don't know. Exactly. It's just too much beauty in this world and to be by yourself. And then I, I, I encourage anybody to travel too. It's such an eye opening experience. And you Super become eye opening. Like, man, just the little things, bro. And then you like, then it makes you think. I, I, matter of fact, if, if anybody who, if anybody is like stuck on like purpose, I challenge you to travel outside the country. Because once you experience what that is, it'll make you think like, damn, okay, I want to experience this more. How can I be able to experience this more? And then we start, the brain start working. Yeah. The ideas start flowing to make that a reality. For sure, bro. And I, I to me, traveling is so important. Like getting out, seeing other Need cultures. It. seeing. Need it. Every, a lot of people just live in their own like i can talk to some people like yeah no nah, i don't need to leave the u.s there's enough here crazy like it's a it's a totally different world like you should go experience it go learn currencies like yeah. um looking at the dollar versus whatever you're going at um so it's a, it's a really interesting is always different food is different drinks are different yeah bro everything and, everything man and over there like you walk everywhere you know which is such a trip like oh, that's too, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah so like because like the cars are all mostly tax people take taxis most a lot of people don't even own like their own car everyone has a motorcycle you know right. it's, it's just like so so fucking different to see a road with like not 80 percent motorcycles and 20 percent cars you know it's it's a it's a fucking weird it's a trip because like, yeah. you you grow up in one place with roads and shit and it's just um yes yeah, so i encourage you man just travel see the world you, you know you're only here for whatever like whatever time you are like go experience go see other cultures connect with different people like and that helps in your own journey as well whatever you're trying to get to like you you learn how to talk to people how to learn how to communicate how to share whatever you're trying to share so um yeah big traveler man gotta do it guys gotta, gotta use that passport if you like i don't know when to start just buy the passport because <laughs> once you buy the passport you obligate it because you're just staring at it and it's not getting stamped. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I think it's not getting stamped. Bro, I noticed we can't we can't have an episode without talking about the Lakers, man. 
Let's trade do that, it. Trade deadline is here is near. We got some rumblings about Kyrie. Who's your Who's your NBA team though? You a Bulls fan? I'm a Bron like, guy. I'm a Bron guy. Man. Anywhere Bron go, to be honest with you, though. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a Lakers fan through and through. That's why I was like, this episode dope as fuck because I was. Uh, <laughs> I'm a Lakers guy. I'm a Lakers. For sure, for sure. That's a that's a kind of new thing too, as well. Like, uh, well, I guess MJ had this a bit, but like, you know, I think uh, growing up, a lot of people are like team fans, and mm-hmm. and it's kind of it's migrating a lot to uh, again. This is like the globalization, right, of media. So, person living in Memphis could be whatever, like a Russell Westbrook fan. You know, like it, it's it's such a different world. So it's cool to see how like the fan has kind of changed to where like they've gravitated towards a player and basketball is the easiest place to do that because you see their face, you know, all they have is a Jersey, like, and there's only 12 players on a team or 15 to 12 players on a team. So like you can really just gravitate towards a player and follow them around. So it's, it's a, it's a cool kind of way they fan, but yeah. That's dope as fuck, man. That's dope as fuck. I've been a basketball, I've been a basketball guy all my life. All my life. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, got 2K. Got jerseys. <laughs> we we immersed in it, man. I love, I love basketball. I'm curious, I man. I'm I wonder if Kyrie could go come to the Lakers. I don't mind giving up Westbrook. I ain't gonna lie. It feel it feels like it, man. It feels Kyrie's such an interesting dude too. Just absolutely fascinating dude. Like he had the obviously issues earlier, um, but I think he's just an interesting person. Like he just a in his own like he's just his own sovereign individual and just not caring about others perspectives he he don't at all um and like you know people like you make 40 million dollars like he like that is like that's so far from his like brain you know he's like what's that to do with me as a person to him yeah as a a human being yeah he's like i'm i'm fighting you know bigger wars i'm trying to you know um teach and all that but it looks like it man it it feels like it it's a it's a player's league and i think we forget that sometimes like that you know the owners and managers and whatever teams coaches it's a players league there's only 450 of them you know there's one lebron james there's one kevin Durant. there's one kyrie irving those are the 0.0011 percent at their profession you know so it's like it's a it's a players run league so i think he will eventually get traded um and we'll see uh lakers have been in this kind of limbo for a little while so russell westbrook was supposed to move this summer didn't get moved. Yeah, stayed on the team. Um, I like that. I like I like Westbrook on the bench though. Like I'm glad Darvin, you know, made. Yeah, the move. yeah, yeah. It's it's worked out okay. I mean, he's played a lot better off the bench. You know, I still think like his game just like is uh just not really sym- symbiotic with like LeBron and AD. You know, nah. those, those are very those are very clashing styles of basketball. Yeah. Three, you know, three guys who just want to ram to the rim is uh not really conductive for winning in today's league you need you need some shooting uh but uh, we'll we'll see man man. nba has become like a place where like people enjoy almost the trades more than like hoops. sometimes you know is it like this is like where they make a lot of their money and their engagement is like this these like six days so like the deadline is in is on february 9th so in like five days but um yeah i'm like man the basketball too like let's watch the game bro let's uh, like let's you know like, but let's enjoy it yeah but this is a fun time like a lot of trades and uh you know speculation and you know sources that's a new thing like sources is like 15 you know it's like that didn't exist you didn't bro that. and now like shams is like out here like you know speaking through a player almost yeah like yeah. connections and stuff like that it's it crazy is- so it's kind of like if 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 you hear something, it's 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 some it's some some truth to it to an extent. It's some hundred percent, bro. To an extent, so you like have like agents. Yeah, like agents. So like again, like it's a small world. So like yeah. it's a few amount of agents have like a ton of players, right? So it's like mm-hmm. these players have agencies and agencies have agents. You know, like so like you'll Crazy. have these huge groups of people all trying to wield whatever the power they have in in the in the game and so um it's cool it's an interesting kind of place we're at with with sports and with anything you know you see even like in nfl nba they all kind of have these sources and trades and speculation it's, it's a fun time i'm just curious I, I love the trade trade season i just want to know where people <laughs> going how the team's got to look and they play best i'm excited for the playoffs though man i can't wait for the playoffs bro 
should be fun this year. A lot of it's an open. The know, West it's open. open. It's no, it's no like guarantee. I'm, 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 I'm LeBron and AD, so I think you know okay. they can they, but it's it's wide open, man. You can't really say one team is can definitely. It's a clear yeah. cut. You have, you know, you have Denver, who's really good, um, who's at the top. You have Memphis up there. I think they're like top two right Memphis, now, and then from. <laughs> they can't. They, I mean, I mean, with, with with Memphis, I don't really see them going to a finals run. Like you, you need more than just Ja. You need Adams for sure, but you, they, they need another another star. I don't. I'm not a fan of Dylan Brooks. I ain't really. I don't really think he the he the he the guy. I don't know. I think I think Memphis needs somebody else riding with him. No, for, for sure. They're probably a year early. Like I think Jaron Jackson Jr. is really they good. They got the Maybe energy though. Team. They got the energy. Like yeah, they, you know they got it. They got everyone pissed off at them, so they're doing something right. You know they, <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, they got everyone fighting with Shannon and shit. Shannon Sharp, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, they are insane, man. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're a fun team, bro. And I, I like that. I like that. Like, you know, like yeah, we haven't been there before, but you know, we can still talk shit and have a good time. Yeah. It's not not disrespectful, you know. I think like they're just like extremely confident in their shit, and they're like. Yeah, we're gonna come at we're gonna come at you, Dylan Brooks, right? I think I think Dylan Brooks is just a volatile, erratic basketball player. Like I think that's I think his game is more troubling to me than like the attitude. Yeah, like, they live off that shit, bro. Like you can't again, like even they with life, that think, energy. Hell yeah, they're aggressive. That's like aggressive. That's that that's that Memphis team, though. That's how they. That's yeah. how they were with um with um what was it, Zach Zach Randall. Zach Randall, Marcus Hall, Mike yeah. Conley, yeah, that like grit that and grind, tough, grit and grind, yeah, grit and grind, yeah. So they kind of represent Memphis, you know, a little. Uh, they represent Memphis well, in my opinion. They're they're aggressive, they're tough, they're in your they're in your you know jersey. It's a, I have fun watching them, man. They're, they're I do a fun too, team. bro. I do too. What you think? What you think about that Rui trade? I like him. I like him on the team. It's another big big size. Runner, I like it a lot. He can finish, shoot yes. the post. 6'8", 240 dude who's uh coordinated, you know, can fucking dribble and pass and shoot, can hit off his shots off the dribble. Like he's a he's a awesome fit. And he looks yeah. huge next to Brian and AD. Bro, you know, those I three was... look big. It, it looks cool, man. I, I love the addition. It's a nice sell low. Washington's going in like a different direction. So um they're would kind of put, building around. Would you put AD at the five, Rui at the four? Yeah. Or LeBron at the four, Rui at the three, maybe yeah. or something like that. They're kind of interchangeable, but yeah, AD at the five. I think that's been working well. So AD's been back like four games now, and he's still um, he looking nice too, even though he ain't got his his his, his feet under him. But yeah. yeah, he doesn't have his legs yet. I just hope, man, that dude gets. I know, hurt. I know. Uh, so it's it's every time he falls, you know, like uh, I was watching the game at the stadium at like Crypto. A couple weeks ago, and like that dude fell, and you could hear the whole stadium's, you know, like heart drop or like hold yeah. their breath, you know, and like he's holding his feet a little bit, and we're like, oh shit, not again. Oh, that's when he when he had chucked that uh the half court shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so they don't show on the TV, bro. He was down for a little bit, so like yeah. they went to timeout, and I was right there, and he was like holding his leg, stretching oh. it. Whole crowd, bro, like silent, you know, like holding their breath. Um, because we need him. People. He the he the yeah. difference maker, bro. Because I he just you can't guard the man. He's just too long, too big. He can do whatever he want in a paint. Like he the cheat code. He's the cheat code. He's another yeah. guy, bro. Like where you could tell, like man, like I, look, AD is amazing. I would just like love to sprinkle a little bit of that like pissed offness on yeah. him. Yeah, you know, like just like. Cause I'm when he gets that. pissed off, dude, he gets he goes crazy. Whole different level, bro. Whole different level. You saw that in the playoffs a little bit too, or you saw that last uh, against Indiana at the yeah. end. Like you saw him go crazy, but just a little bit more of that pissed off. Pissed he's, off, man. Yeah, he's a little too like nonchalant. Like he's too skilled to be nonchalant. Like he's too good. He's too dominant to be like. Need that KG passive. mindset. Just I'm gonna go at your ass. Yeah, like his mentality, bro. Like it's too passive sometimes. Like he's like. He has think, quotes about this too. He's like, yeah. "Yeah, I'm just trying to be one of the guys." I'm like, nah, no, you, don't be one. Of, like, you, you the dog. You, you big yeah, dog. you the dog, bro. Like, let's like, um, you, you don't need to be passive or you know, give up a give up aggression to anybody. Like, you can you can do your thing. So, but I think but too, like cool. having having Pat Pat Bev on the team too, being his ill, yeah, 
yeah, he he's he's a he's a aggressive dude as well. You gotta be be six. I hope one we keep and... him though. I hope we keep my like Pep Bev on the team. We need him for I know I know he ain't really have like the offensive, but the little things he do, you need that. Yeah, you need that, for sure. especially in the in the in the playoffs. It's nah, for sure. Boost. He's he's a he's a dog. He's a freaking he, he's a huge he's a big time defender. He can hit open shots. I mean he's fine. We'll we'll see if they move him yeah. at the at the deadline. But um yeah, he was he was their big trade target in like the summer. That's the only trade they made. They uh they got Pat Bev um in the summer and they kinda kept everyone else. But he's that he's that like that Jared Dudley. Like... Yeah, I think he can play a little more than Jared Dudley. Yeah. Jared Dudley is kind of like on the bench and shit. Um, yeah, yeah. but uh, not nah, Pep is fun, man. We got a fun team. We just we do. We can. We just need eighty to be. Yeah, any eighty to be healthy. Like that was the. What do you think about LeBron still doing this at thirty eight? Like Bro. what kind of, kind of Insane. like saying kind of never... chakras is he doing in the morning, man? Bro, like, I don't. I don't know what he. I don't know what he doing, man. That. That's just impressive, and then the fact that she he even saying I could at least I think he's he's doing an interview. I I at least can play. I'm like, damn. So how long are you thinking you can go at this level? Like this shit is unheard of, man. Like I've always like a grew up a, a LeBron James guy, and it's just that you can't like to me he the goat just personally, and yeah. then after the scoring title, I mean that's another stamp. Like that's. You might as well treat that like a championship. That's like a the all time, all time. And he's they they he can win some more chips, man. I don't y'all, so, y'all gotta put some respect on that man. Bro, like connecting this to like our earlier conversation, like LeBron don't need the money, don't need the fame, already in the Hall of Fame, whenever he gets out, already a billionaire and resume of already speaks for itself. Yeah, like already on Forbes billionaire list or whatever, right? When he retires, what is he playing? Like, wh- like where is that love of the everyday still coming? You know, like he talks about his routine. It's like this dude that don't have to do any of this. Bro. It's that discipline. Like he doesn't have to do he any doesn't of have it. To, like, no. like the money's already there. But the it's success. the routine. It's that routine. No. But that's the thing. Like his routine isn't easy though. You yeah. know, like wake up, cold tub can't eat fast food you can't eat shit at a restaurant whatever you want it's the most chiseled freaking yeah yeah like, taken care of body probably in the world yeah you don't have to do that he's has he's making millions passively if he wants to you know it's just like where's that that's that like where's, where's that that inspiration yeah from but it's the love over that every day like it's loving like waking up and just living in the he's He's lived in the work for so long, he don't know what's outside. Like he like he don't even you know what I mean? yeah. he's lived in the work forever since he was 18, right? So he got in the league at 18. He's what 38 now? Yeah, 20 years. Nice. He don't even know. Like he look at other, he probably looks at people who like sleep in till 12, like, what? Like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean sleep in till 12? Been, like, been up you, since 12, 5 a.m. What you doing? <laughs> got time being wasted. I've got two workouts in since six. Like what? Like you know, so it, it, it's cool to watch like people like that. Obviously, those are the extreme examples. You know, those are people who like. But it's just that extreme. work ethic, man. It's just it's just yeah. inspiring, man. You just you maintain consistency for, in a high level of play for so long, man. It's just freaking inspiring. And he still like enjoys it. You could watch yeah. him play. Like it's not Someone like he's out there like being a kid. Yeah, it's not like he's out there like clocking in, you know, to a like to a paycheck. Like that's yeah. not. But you see guys in the league five years start going like, clock in paycheck type of. You know, they get their first con- first contract, and then it's like, yeah, I'm done. I did my job. But like, I feel know, like maybe like that's me. that's probably just what they wanted was to get that first check. Yeah. And then after that, okay, I made it. And it's like, yeah. hey, you want that second big check too? You gotta. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for the big goals. We gotta keep. <laughs> You gotta keep going, but I get it though. I, I get how it's easy to get. It's easy to get complacent in anything in life, man. Once oh, you, for sure. Once you achieve, like you, you worked your butt off. Like, let's say you, like, I was just having. A, I was speaking about this in a pod with, um, um, with someone who is the founder of a cannabis store, and okay. the you have to have the the discipline, the love, and just the. Not knowing how it's gonna get done to get done. It's just you. You got. You gotta just. You just gotta put in the fucking work, man. Whatever you do, whatever you fucking. Hundred percent. 
hundred percent finding whatever you love, you know. And again, like people who made the NBA got their first contract. And if you're done after that, go ahead, man. Like if you found your cool. piece with that, yeah, you know, make your cool twenty million, whatever, and just live off that. Shit, like, that's I'm, that's I'm, fine. Hey, I'll sign an NBA contract. I'll be <laughs> I'll be a towel boy. What's up? <laughs> I'll be a tough boy. Give me a piece of that pie. Hundred percent, bro. I was, I was like reading like NBA like quotes and shit as just like part of the job. You hear like millionaires say like, "Man, yeah, I felt broke being on a team next to someone who makes like forty million a year, and I make I, three million a year." Isn't that crazy? How how they can still feel that way, bro? Because you got millions a... of people. You got millions of people coming to watch you every day. Damn. Who's who spent four hundred dollars on a ticket? You know, but you can still feel. It's that pers- Man. Yeah, you could still feel like less than you know, just because the person next to you, somebody's who's like one, more. yeah, who's like one out of a billion, you know, of like people, but just because they're in your close proximity, you feel, you feel less intimidated. Than that yeah, when in reality, like that's not even how the world works at all. No. So it's a, it's it's interesting, bro. Like how people look at other people and stuff. Because I can see it from that perspective. Like let's let's take the a forty million dollar player versus a three million yeah. forty dollar. Forty million dollar. They they every day is a bit different with how they move in certain things versus 100%. the three million. They got to budget a little bit more. They can't be as free spending as they want to. They could be a tight budget. So like I, I get it. Yeah, it's all perspective, bro. It's this all person living. There's a person living. There's a person making a hundred thousand dollars a year, probably living way below their means and enjoying every day. And another person making a hundred thousand dollar a year. With bills that are eight thousand a month, you know, like you, like you know, it's it's such a crazy kind of perspective that you can kind of look at things. Um, uh, and and the way we've gone now is everyone needs a four bedroom house, three yeah. bathroom, picket fence. It's a show. It's, it's showmanship. Two and a, two and a half cars, like um, Just give me my one good car, if, and I'm good. Yeah. You, so I've heard like on your pods, you've had a lot of people like about money and like mm-hmm. also like building credit and like all that stuff, which I think is extremely important. And like I listen, I don't know if you listen to Dave Ramsey, but like he's a love Dave Ramsey. You, yeah, and yeah, you know he has some questionable um, yeah. <laughs> thoughts or whatever. How he, however he he says things in a way that's kind mm-hmm. of uh, uh, polarizing, but I think like his main point is kind of true. Like he's like if you look down the street, like of a neighborhood, you know. Nine out of ten, no matter where the neighborhood is, how nice the houses are, nine out of ten are like living paycheck to paycheck, which yep. is like insane. No matter what neighborhood you go into the United States, um, because we're in a world where like in consumerism, where whatever you have in your bank, there's something out there to fill it, you know, to yep. take it, like whatever it is, no matter like like you ever you ever get paid in like your car just like you know what I mean? Like you ever like just get like a lot of money and then all of a sudden like these bills come to exactly fill that. Like, it's such a crazy kind of thing where, uh, it, like, the world works that way. And his yeah. thing is, like, you, like, you can't, you know, you can't just wander out. You can't just wander into wealth. Like, that's a plan. That's something that's Strategic, scheduled that you, yeah. like, disciplined out. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting kind of to think about it that way. But, um, yeah, it, it, it it's not what, you know, what people share online is not exactly what what's real. So That's true, bro. That is true. Raj, man, I always ask this uh, this last question to my guests, man. What would your message be to humanity during this time? Message to humanity, man. Uh, yeah, that's that's a strong question. Uh, chase your passion, man. Chase chase what you love. Try to try to find what that is. Um, use whatever means you can. Uh, I don't think we're meant to work or go to a job that we dislike for Perhaps. our whole life, you know. So. Perhaps. Try to find it, find peace, um, be kind to one another, uh, and live live your live your dream out, whatever, whatever that is. Hey, I love it, man. Raj, bro, welcome on any time. I appreciate you hopping on, big dog. Appreciate you for having me, man. This is dope. This is my first like non sports show. So been really interested in this space. Hell so yeah. I think uh it's cool. It's a you, you got a dope thing going and you got appreciate dope that. guests that come on every week. So Appreciate Keep doing you, what man. you're doing, man. Appreciate you, big dog. I'm going to provide uh, everything to follow for Raj underneath the description. And, guys, have a great day, man. It's a, I'm giving you a lot of content this week, so let's keep this shit going. Talk to you soon.